Wow, those poor shippers. So many were lost in the carnage. The horrible, horrible carnage. Who's cleaning up this mess? Wow, this is a packed one. Like I already alluded to, this episode does something the show historically doesn't really cover too often. Romantic relationships. And in case you're new, I believe it was Lauren Fouch herself that made the official rule all those eons ago, stating that she didn't want the main cast of girls focus on romantic relationships, or at the very least it wasn't a primary focus of theirs. So romance as a plot point has only appeared a couple times with that mindset. I think shippers like this idea best because it doesn't really interfere how they see and interpret the show. See an older video for that one. So seeing an episode not only about romance, but an upgrade of romantic status with two secondary characters is something that's a little odd. And am I for it? I don't know. I think you have to tread ground carefully with it. I mean, it's natural for romances to advance like this, similar to how real life works. But with that said, I don't think romances can be the main focus. And especially like this one, where Sugar Bell and Big Nack's attraction just kind of came out of nowhere, disregarding what past episodes seemed to imply. That I'm not really a big fan of, but more on that later. But let's just start talking about that thing that you came here to have me talk about. We start at Sweet Apple Acres, where the children are curious where Big Mac is going to all the time. He's been making a lot of apple deliveries and no one knows why. Cut to the CMC, who with the help of their newly acquired spy outfits, I guess that's what we're calling them, to see what's up. Once we get to the village, Sugar Bell seems to order a lot of apples lately. She's got her eye on the biggest one if you know what I mean. So once the child realizes, this, they devise a plan. I love how Sweetie's like, Well, I was younger on the way here. I just love the dialogue in this episode. Anyway, we have Jesus Christ. Is that a Justin Bieber pony? Well, Justin Bieber pony is a thing now. It's canon. It's confirmed. Can we just have that hair flip in slow motion? Okay, cool. Lord, this episode just got better. And to answer the CMC's question, can Sugar Bell like two ponies at the same time? I think she's just being polite if the end of the episode is anything to consider. Also, what can he do that you can't? That. It's a crystal. Nothing more. So the gang tries and fails with some odd stuff happening. Idea number two doesn't work too much better. <laughs> I need an adult! Cut to. Well, never mind. Let's try a song battle to win the heart of the maiden. Baby, lock the door and turn the lights down low. And put some music on that's soft and slow. We got a party like it's 30, 12 tonight. I wanna show you all the finer things in life. So just forget about the world we I've been thinking about this all day long. Never felt a feeling quite the strong. If I was your boyfriend, never let you go. Keep you away. You make me smile like the sun. Fall out of bed, sing like the sun. My head keep breaking. If I was your boyfriend, make me smile. Baby, baby. No, Don Cardin, now they think you. They were right. Everybody was right. You, you are a gentleman. Man, I love this show. So, what happens? Well, if you couldn't tell by Sugar Bell's annoyed expression, look at that face. She gets angry and leaves, complaining that the guys just don't really know her. Big Mac's like, I'm gonna build her a shelf so we can conceive our future children on it. I mean, it's a nice gesture while Scootaloo distracts. Good job there. And then I guess that's it. Big Mac wins the girl. It it's cute. Eskimo kisses are cute. And oh, Justin Bieber pony can't talk to girls? <laughs> like... I, I'm like I can't <laughs> I'm not even touching that one. I'm dying like just just go on without me I can't even uh, These jokes write themselves like this episode is one of my favorites for the season Jesus Christ This show took a mundane concept and really just had fun with it from the character interaction to just the over-the-top banter I'm laughing the whole way through I do feel bad and it was a little confusing how Sugar Bell became a love interest out of the blue and with so much cheesing of Big Mac and other ships I mean what's the point of all this damn ship teasing with other ponies like Cheer Lee and Marble Pie if it's just gonna end so abruptly I mean, I guess the argument is the show can do whatever it wants and also these characters can evolve over time Maybe the Marble Pie thing didn't go anywhere from a writer's perspective. This does seem kind of crew to have your audience invest in a pairing that seems like it's gonna become Ganon only just to kill your dreams. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't kill the dreams. 
Don't kill the dreams! Seriously, as a shipper in general, I feel you all out there, even though I'm not particularly invested in any Big Mac ships. Another question is, how will the show address this going forward? Will they have Sugar Bell and Big Mac's relationship develop, or will something else happen that they'll sweep it under the rug like? I just hope the show staff has plans to develop this, if not the episode just feels wasted. I better not hear that Sugar Bell just met some hot stud off screen when this is mentioned again, that will also be mean. But just the style and how fast placed and fun this one reminded me of the Looney Tunes episodes, and I'm decently sure that was intentional. Peppy Lip you anyone? Again, my favorite episode so far. I'm sorry shippers don't hate me. Hey, it's the end of the video, so if you liked it, please remember to like and subscribe and stuff. Coming up next, My Little Pony. Kids, I can't find the remote and I refuse to stand up. Couldn't find the remote.